and with Trinity Lutheran Church on this, the ninth day of Christmas. Depending on how joyful the singing gets, I look forward to seeing nine ladies or gentlemen or nine non-binary persons dancing in the aisle today. This is a Reconciling in Christ congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America that welcomes and advocates for all of God's children, actively works for racial and economic justice, and honors the full spectrum of gender, sexual orientation, gender identification, and expression. The annual meeting of this congregation will take place on January the 30th in this room immediately after worship. All of you are encouraged to attend and to know what's going on. But only those of you who are official signed and sealed members of the congregation are allowed to vote on any of the matters on the agenda. So if you want to know about becoming a signed and sealed member of this congregation, there's a communication form on the back of your bulletin that you can use to tell me about that or to tell me about anything else you want me to know. Everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion today. You don't need to be a member of this or of any church. If you're here in the sanctuary, you have the choice of staying in your pew or coming up here to the altar rail to receive communion. If you want to stay in your place, you need one of those little paper bags that contains the bread and wine or bread and juice that you will receive. If you're going to come forward for communion, make sure you stop at one of these two little tables and grab your communion elements before then going to the altar rail to stand or kneel at the altar rail. And the ushers will help you with all of that at the right time. The January of our issue of our newsletter has been published. Uh, you can pick up a, a printed copy today. It can also be emailed to you if you're not yet on the mailing list for the newsletter. Use that communication form on the back page of your bulletin to tell us that you want to receive the newsletter by email every month. Every Wednesday at 9 a.m., members of the congregation gather for breakfast at the Copper Kitchen. That's on Central Avenue at 56th Street South, and everyone is welcome to join them. We have an online Bible study, and that's going to resume this Thursday at 2 p.m. We are looking at the final chapters of the book of Isaiah. We don't pass an offering plate anymore, but during the offering hymn, you can use your smartphone and the QR code in the bulletin to make a contribution on our website, or you can write out the check that you're going to put in the offering plate as you are leaving. There are also envelopes there that you can use to make a cash contribution to our ministries. Is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? Okay, well, there are a few listed in the bulletin. Spring Smith, Doug Corsino, and you can reach out to them by phone or by email to wish them a happy birthday. But now I invite any other announcements that I've forgotten to make. All right, I invite you to take a moment to quiet your heart and your mind in preparation for today's worship. Now, as you are able to do so, and as it is easy for you to do so, I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. Let us confess our sin trusting in the tender mercy of our God.
Holy God, we confess our sin to you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We hide our sins of self in material things. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us and assure us again of your grace. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In him your sins are forgiven, and you have God's gift of peace. Amen.
singing those songs. I love it. The second Sunday in the season of Christmas invites us to lift our eyes from the, the baby in the manger and try to see a bigger picture, a much bigger picture that includes all human experience throughout time and that fills all of the empty space in the universe. Christmas only lasts 12 days, but it celebrates Christ active throughout all of time and space. The message of today's scriptures is that the awesome God of creation cares about each one of us as an individual. The cosmic and infinite Jesus matters to me because he redeems not just me, but all of my life experiences. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah imagines a homecoming that is marked by both laughter and tears. Psalm 147 compares God's will to a kind of weather that is very rare in the Middle East. The letter to the Ephesians overwhelms us with words as it tries to describe what God has planned since the dawn of creation. The Gospel of John talks of God's Word becoming flesh at one particular moment in time in order to redeem all of time. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The second reading is from the letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all the wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his glory according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God most blessed. Thanks nice be to God. and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him, and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. 
Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke begin with stories about the miraculous conception and birth of Jesus. Matthew, Luke, and Mark describe the baptism ministry of John before they introduce the adult Jesus standing on the banks of the Jordan River. Our fourth Gospel takes a very different approach to telling the story of Jesus. It begins by alternating between descriptions of cosmic mysteries and very down-to-earth descriptions of the work of John the Baptist. In this prologue to the fourth gospel, all of the pronouns and the metaphors point to Jesus but it takes a while before we hear his name. First, he is referred to as the Word, with a capital W. The word Word holds a lot of words within it. The Word is all of the words spoken by God and all of the words ever written about God. The Word is every proclamation of God's love. In Greek, the Word is Logos, so the Word is the logic, the guiding principle that propels the universe. When that Word, that logic, and that purpose take on human flesh and make a dwelling among us, his name is Jesus. But the Word has always existed in God and as God and alongside God. According to the Bible, the first word spoken by God resulted in the creation of the infinite universe in which we live. God said, let there be light, and there was light everywhere. Throughout the vastness of the universe, God's Word has always had creative and transformative power. The prophet Isaiah hears God say, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return until they have watered the earth, so shall my Word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. Today's psalm also compares God's word to the power of precipitation. In the long history of the city of Jerusalem, the times when it has known the kind of peace and prosperity celebrated in this psalm have been few indeed. Peace and prosperity have been about as common in Israel as snow and hail and bitter frost. The experiences that are the most rare are the ones easiest to attribute to the power of God. God sends out God's word and it influences the weather. God's word is declared and it influences the fate of nations and individuals. The psalm celebrates the unique status of the ancient Israelites. At the time of its writing, they are the only people who have a close relationship with the God of creation. The words of the statutes and judgments given to them by God are signs of God's presence in the heart of the community. That presence of God with the people 
is captured in the use of the word Zion. Nowadays, Zion is a national park in Utah, or maybe the city of refuge in all of the Matrix movies. Originally, Zion was just the name of the hilltop on which Solomon's magnificent temple was built. It then became a way of identifying the place where God chose to live with human beings. Jerusalem was its political and economic reality. Zion was its spiritual reality. The use of Zion to speak of God's presence within a community of faith continues to this very day. Even when Jerusalem and its temple are reduced to rubble, God continues to dwell with human beings in the best and worst situations that life can throw at them. Today's reading from Jeremiah is similar to many of those hopeful prophetic messages that we've heard in recent weeks, but it isn't quite as idealistic as the others. It describes the homecoming of traumatized people as a mix of both joy and sorrow. They are still weeping as they make their way home. They still need God's consolation, even as all of their dreams come true. They cry out for God's help, even as they sing aloud with gladness. The people for whom this message was written believed that their suffering was a divine punishment for their sinful rebellion. For them, it was good news that the God who had scattered them hadn't also abandoned them. God stayed faithful to a people who had turned away from God. God still had great plans for them as a nation, so God was regathering them to make those plans a reality. Jeremiah celebrates the ransom and the redemption of the people of Judah. The letter to the Ephesians goes much, much further. Look back over that reading from Ephesians, especially if you think it's kind of confusing. Try to imagine it as one sentence from beginning to end. One single run-on sentence, the subject of which is God and all that God has accomplished in Jesus, because that's what the author of this letter wrote in the original Greek. One endless sentence describing the limitless power of God's purpose and God's desire. Participle after participle and clause after clause without ever catching a breath in order to announce that God has a plan to gather up all things within a loving embrace. All things. All people, all living things, the rocks and the rusty cars, the very fabric of the universe, all of it gathered up in love. All people of all times and places, all of human history, all of human experience throughout all of time, gathered together in one moment in time. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, all of it is redeemed. Redemption is more than the forgiveness of our sins. Redemption is about turning garbage into glory. Some of us remember redeeming green stamps for merchandise, or redeeming old glass bottles for cash. When Jesus redeems us, he also redeems our experiences. Jesus turns the garbage of our lived experience, pain, sorrow, regret, shame, into blessing. He doesn't magically wipe them away. He gives them value. He makes our pain, present and past, 
the source of present and future blessing. In Jesus, God gathers up all things, not just good things and beautiful things, but also painful things and tragic things. Everything is redeemed because all of it is gathered together in the love of God. Wars and atrocities redeemed. Natural disasters redeemed. Persistent pandemics redeemed. Amen. Not erased, just given value and turned into blessing. It is a complete mystery. Amen. It can't be understood or analyzed. All we can do is celebrate with a mixture of laughter and tears. This has always been God's plan for creation. God didn't decide on some plan B after plan A was ruined. God knew that God would have to redeem a creation that was founded upon our freedom to love. Love is only love when it can be freely given or freely withheld. It was probably a mistake for us to ever have divided human history into a time before Christ and after. There is no such thing as before Christ. Christ has always been in the world as the Word proceeding from God and accomplishing all of God's desires. God and God's word stand outside of time and space in order to hold all of time and space. The word becomes flesh and dwells among us at one time and place and at all times and all places. An infinite and eternal God becoming flesh at one time means that God is flesh at all times. God dying for the world at one time means that God is always dying for the world. All of human history is redeemed. All of my life is redeemed. All of yours is redeemed. All of our shame and regret and sorrow is redeemed. Like the first spoken words of creation, the birth of a baby in Bethlehem is the spark of a big bang of life and light and meaning expanding in all directions until it fills all human lives, all of human history, past, present, and future, filled to overflowing with love.
using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life. True God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and he became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and people of faith throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Redeeming God, your rain and snow wash away our fear and regret. Make us agents of redemption and reconciliation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, you are present in all things and in all situations. Help us to be present in places of violence, oppression, and devastation by fire and water. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning, awakening us to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. God of words, you make yourself known in many forms of language. Keep us mindful of how we communicate and of those who struggle to share their words. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Unchanging God, you guide us through change. Guide this congregation as we seek new ways to reach out to our community. Bless Brendan as he guides the music ministries of this congregation. Guide those coping with difficult situations, illness, or pain, especially Bill Bible, Joyce New, Craig Bauer, and all those we bring before you now.
Merciful God, we keep our prayer. Living God, with tears we rejoice for all who showed us your perfect love. Journey with us until, with them and all your saints, we receive our inheritance in you. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's find ways to share signs of that peace with one another and with all the people in such desperate need of God's peace.
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one body by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A feast of love that is offered here. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You can go ahead and be seated. If you're coming up to the rail, the ushers will tell you when to come forward. If you're staying in your places, go ahead and uncover the bread that you have. It is the body of Christ given for you. And then uncover the wine that you have. It is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus, God with us in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand to receive God's blessing. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Savior, thanks, thanks be to God. God.